Okay, I'm finally back after all of that time away. I had some serious health issues I was dealing with, um, but someone has been writing me asking me to restart, so I am. So I just want to orient you, and this is the only day that I will go through this, um, and then at, I will show you each of them at the beginning, but I'm going to be a little bit more in depth today just to explain for day six. So if you just want to hear the reading, you can skip ahead. So we are on day six, starting in the patriarch time period, and we're still in the first narrative book, and we're doing today, Genesis 12 through 13, Job 1 through 2, and Proverbs 1 through um, seven. So that's what we'll be reading today. But I want to orient you to where, where we're at and what we're doing, just so you have an idea of where we are to orient us. Okay. So 14, there are 14 narrative books and that's what's special about the Jeff Cavins Great Adventure Program. Um, and we are still in this first narrative book, okay? Um, so, and obviously you can see um, it goes up. Genesis, the first book, goes up to day 26. So we're reading quite a bit in those 14 narrative books. Um, so these 14 narrative books are here. And they tell the big. They tell the story from beginning to end. Every other book goes at the same, uh, overlaps the time periods, and so it can get confusing. So this is why he um, did a skeleton for you to understand the entire Bible through these fourteen narrative books. After that, you can read the tucked in books. But that's what he suggests, and I have to tell you, it really does help. Um, and then. There are 12 color-coded uh, time periods, and these, these all fit in like the early world. Genesis is in the early world, and notice it's blue over here. Um, and, then, um, and then it goes to the patriarch, which is the blood covenant with Abraham. See where it uses the, the burgundy for blood covenant. So just for you to have an understanding. And then... We are in, we did, in the first five days, we did the holy couple, the, the first covenant, Adam and Eve, the second covenant, holy family. So we went from holy couple to whole, one holy family, one holy couple, one holy family, Noah, one holy tribe, Abraham, which will be the 12 tribe, you know. It will, it's, he's the beginning of the 12 tribes, one holy tribe. And then, on um, that's what, that's where we're at now. We are, we are on number three of the six. So I just wanted to orient you where we're at in the story. And then I want to show you over here in, in, if you look here, I'm trying to move this over, but it won't move. Won't move. Okay. Um, so here we are. Patriarchs is Genesis 12 through 50. So 1 through 12 is the early world, and 12 through 50 is, is the patriarchs. So it gives you the time period, the actual time period. It gives you the color. These are the 12 periods here, the narrative books, and then the supplemental books that go around that are, are um, overlapping at the same time. Um, so this is Job is happening in the patriarch time period. So we're doing here now, day six happens to be six of the... 70 key events that happen in these 14 narrative books and these 12 time periods. There are also 70 key events. And we are on number six of that 70. God calls Abram out of Ur. 
So, and in the time, and in this time period, that's the only one in this, in, that takes place in this time period. So as you can see here, it also tells you where it happens, the northern countries, land of Canaan. Okay. And so this is where we're at. This is it, the covenant. We're in, oh, actually we are, um, yeah, I, I, actually there are, uh, here are the other um, ones of the 70 key events that take place. Uh, seven, we're not doing those today, but the, these are what take place in the 70 key events that happen throughout the entire Bible. For you to understand the entire Bible, there are 70 key events. And it looks like uh, six to 14 of them take place in the patriarch's time period. So, and it gives you a little bit about the covenant. Remember I showed you the covenants. So this is the Abrahamic covenant. Okay. And it actually starts at Genesis 15, 17, and 22, but um, we're starting it today with being introduced to God calling Abram out of earth. Okay. So what I like about it too, is it tells you uh, like this, the south of Egypt, a, a Jacob's family moves to Egypt. And so see how you can see where, and each time period, it tells you where you're, where they're at in the world and what else is happening. It gives you the world power. And at this time, in this time period, it's Egypt. And um, in secular history, it doesn't have it for this one, but in other time periods, you will see um, secular history, uh, what's happening. And it's very interesting. So I just wanted to give you an orientation of all that. Oh, and I'll just move down here. Um, this is the narrative and supplemental books. See, we're still in the, we just left the early world and we are, um, in the patriarchs and that's Genesis. So see, so we'll be done when we're finished Genesis, not today. We're only in 12 after 26 days, I think it said, um, you'll be done that part. So see, that's how it works. It's divided up. So it gives you an understanding of the big picture, because if you have the big picture of something, you can slowly tuck in the little pieces to the picture once you have the big picture. So, and this is the key to the period colors. It just kind of tells you those things. And next time I'll show you the 70, um, the 70 key events, but I just wanted to explore a little bit more this time for you guys to understand, um, orient you to where we are. So, okay, now let's go back and start our reading. Let me get rid of this. Hold on. Okay. So, We're, we're starting with Genesis 12 and 13, Job 1 and 2, Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. So let's go over here to the Bible. Um, by the way, I, I want to tell you this too. Um, I'm also going to show you, um, so when you're done here, you can go and listen to um, Father Mike Schmitz. And I'm actually going to put the right, because uh, it was going just to the main page, I'm going to put this particular link in there. So you'll be able to click on it. It'll be in the description and go there. And then if you're on day six, you just go in here and push day six, you know, type it in and then push search or enter, return your return. And then it'll pop up and you've got to scroll down here and here. So January 6th is when, when he did it, we actually started reading it before January to start because I was so excited, thought I was going to continue. And then I, like I said, I ran into those health problems. So if we clicked on this, then it would start. Um, and, and you might not want to listen to all the reading if you're going to do it right here. I like the visual when I'm doing it. So you can always skip ahead to, 
um, his explanation because it's not just the reading, but you can skip all the way ahead to where he starts talking about the, the explanation. He might give you a little more. He does give you a little more in depth. So I just want you to see that too. Let's go start here. Genesis 12 and 13. So, and I have our pictures here just to kind of give an idea. And that's, and this is just the beginning. Okay, so the Lord said to Abram, go forth from your land your relatives, and from your father's house to a land, I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai, his brother's son Lot, all the possessions that they had accumulated and the persons that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land as far as the sacred place at Shechem, by the oak of Moreh. The Canaanites were then in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel, pitching his tent with Bethel to the west and I to the east. He built an altar there to the Lord and invoked the Lord by name. Then Abram journeyed on by stages to Negeb, Abram and Sarai in Egypt. There was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there since the famine in the land was severe. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know you're a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, she is his wife, then they will kill me, but let you live. Please say, therefore, that you are my sister, so that I may fare well on your account, and my life may be spared for your sake. When Abram arrived in Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. When Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Abram fared well on her account, and he acquired sheep, oxen, male and female servants, male and female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his household with severe plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Then Pharaoh summoned Abram and said to him, How could you do this to me? Why did you not tell me she, she, she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister, so that I took her for my wife? Now, here is your wife, take her and leave. Then the Pharaoh gave his men orders concerning Abram, and they sent him away with his wife and all that belonged to him. From Egypt, Abram and Lot part. From Egypt, Abram went up to Nahab with his wife and all that belonged to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. From Negeb he traveled by stages toward Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had formerly stood. 
the site where he had built his where he had first built the altar and there abram invoked the na- the lord by name lot who went with abram also had flocks and herd and tents so the land could not support them if they stayed together their possessions were so great that they could not live together there were quarrels between the herders of abram's livestock and the herders of lot's livestock at this time the canaanites and the perizzites were living in the land so abram said to lot let there be no strife between you and me or between your herders and my herders for we are kindred kindred it is not is not the whole land available please separate from me if you prefer the left i will go to the right if you prefer the right i will go to the left lot looked about and saw how abundantly watered the whole jordan plain was as far as zor so like the lord's own garden or like egypt this was before the lord had destroyed sodom and gomorrah lot therefore chose for himself the whole jordan plain and set out eastward thus they separated from each other abram settled in the land of canaan where lot settled among the cities of the plain pitching his tents near saddam now the inhabitants of saddam were wicked great sinners against the lord after lot had parted from him the lord said to abram look about you and from where you go where you are gaze to the north and south east and west all the land that you see i will give you and your descendants forever i will make your descendants like the dust of the earth if anyone could count the dust of the earth your descendants too might be counted get up and walk through the land across its length and breadth, for I give it to you. Abram moved his tents and went on to settle near the oak of Mamre, which is Hebron. There he built an altar to the Lord. Okay, so now let's look at our plan. So we did Genesis 12. And 13. So now we're going to do Job 1 and 2 and then 1 Proverbs. So let's go. Oops, sorry. So let's go to um, back. And go to Job. Let me look one more time. I apologize. Uh, one and two. <laughs> okay. Job's piety. In the land of Uz, there was a blameless and upright man named Job who feared God and avoided evil seven sons and three daughters were born to him and he had seven thousand sheep three thousand camels five hundred yoke of oxen five hundred she donkeys and a very large household so that he was greater than any one in the east his sons used to take turns giving feasts sending invitations to their three sisters to eat and drink with them and when each feast had run its course job would send for them and sanctify them rising early and offering sacrifices for every one of them for job said it may be that my children have sinned and cursed god in their hearts job did this habitually the interview between the lord and satan one day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord the satan also came among them the lord said to the satan where have you been then the satan answered the lord and said roaming the earth and patrolling it 
the lord said to to the satan have you noticed my servant job there is no one on earth like him blameless and upright fearing god and avoiding evil the satan answered the lord and said is it for nothing that job is god fearing have you not surrounded him and his family and all that he has with your protection you have blessed the work of his hands and his livestock are spread over the land but now put forth your hand and touch all that he has and surely he will curse you to your face and the lord said to satan very well all that he has is in your power only do not lay a hand on him so that satan went forth from the presence of the lord the first trial one day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their elder brother their eldest brother a message came to job and said the oxen were plowing and the donkey grazing beside them and the sabaeans carried them off in a raid they put the servants to the sword and i alone have escaped to tell you he was still speaking when another came and said god's fire has fallen from heaven and struck the sheep and servants and consumed them i alone have escaped to tell you he was still speaking when another came and said the chaldeans formed three columns seized the camels carried them off and put the servants to the sword i alone have escaped to tell you he was still speaking when another came and said your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother and suddenly a great wind came from across the desert and smashed the four corners of the house it fell upon the young people and they are dead i alone have escaped to tell you job's reaction then job arose and tore his cloak and cut off his hair he fell to the ground and worshipped he said naked i came forth from my mother's womb and naked i shall go back there the lord gave and the lord has taken away blessed be the name of the lord in all this job did not sin nor did he charge god with wrong The second interview. One day, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, the Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you been? Then the Satan answered the Lord and said, Roaming the earth and patrolling it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? There was no one on earth like him. We're on chapter two. Okay, it's repeating. Um, there was no one on earth like him, blameless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil. He still holds fast to his innocence, although you incited me against him to ruin him for nothing. The Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, all that a man has he will give for his life. But put forth your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, then he surely will curse you to your face and the lord said to satan he is in your power only spare his life the second trial so satan went forth from the presence of the lord and struck job with severe boils from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head job's reaction he took a potsherd to scrape himself as he sat among the ashes then his wife said to him are you still holding to your innocence curse god and die but he said to her you speak as foolish women do we accept good things from god should we not accept evil Th through all this job did not sin in what he said job's three friends now when three of job's friends heard of all the misfortune that had come upon him they set out each one from his own place eliphaz from teman bilidad from shul and zophar from namath they met and journeyed together to give him sympathy and comfort but when at a distance they lifted up their eyes and did not recognize him they began to weep aloud they tore their cloaks and threw dust into the air over their heads then they sat down upon the ground with him seven days and seven nights 
but none of them spoke a word to him, for they saw how great was his suffering. Okay, so we did Genesis, Job, and now we'll do Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. So let's go back to the Bible. Wait a minute. What did I just say? Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. One, one through seven. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, that people may know wisdom and discipline, may understand intelligent sayings, may receive instruction in wise conduct, in what is right, just, and fair, that resourcefulness may be imparted to the naive knowledge and discretion to the young. The wise, by hearing them, will advance in learning. The intelligent will gain sound guidance. To comprehend proverb and byword, the words of the wise and their riddles. Fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Okay, so now... If I were you, I would go here and search for the day that you're on. And I put in here day six and pushed search and did return and pulled it up and trust in the Lord. My father, Mike, reads the same things and chose Abram and Job despite their brokenness and able to trust in God the complete reading plan you can text that or visit okay and i also give you that and like i said he gives a little sometimes he gives a little um he gives a little talk there at the end if you want to go and look at that so we'll start again tomorrow and begin at genesis 14 to 15.